Welcome in everybody. It is NFL Draft Night. We are inside Channel 7 Studios ready to bring you live coverage leading up to the NFL Draft in Philadelphia. And we'll talk about everything that the Lions could look forward to to picking 21st overall here as they get set for their first pick in the NFL Draft. Will they trade up? Will they move down? You can join the conversation right now with your phone, with your tablet. I'm checking your comments. You're going to drive the conversation with us here on Sports Buzz Live here within our Facebook studios at Channel 7. So the 21st overall pick, so many possibilities for the Lions. We saw Corey Davis take the red carpet moments ago at the NFL Draft, the Western Michigan wide receiver in a fancy pink coat. Now before you stop me and say, whoa, 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 not another wide receiver, I'm just saying, it's NFL Draft Night, it's going to be special. The talent with a lot of local prospects is certainly there, and a lot of local talent is something that the Lions will definitely look at. Bob Quinn told us he's open to anything. He's open to anything at any position. We can probably at this point as Kyle Minkie told us from MLive on our 6 o'clock sportscast, rule out quarterback. Specialist probably out of the question. Taylor Decker was the first round draft pick last season out of Ohio State. He was the team's best lineman. At this point with all the offseason signings, we can probably rule out offensive tackle and most likely offensive guard. They know what they have at center. So we're not looking at quarterback. We're not looking at offensive line. Who do you think the Lions should take? A linebacker, a defensive end? Those are the hot topics. As you guys drive the conversation, we will be here guiding you. I'll tell you right off the bat, the guy I think they should go after is Florida linebacker Jared Davis. He had an injury two seasons ago in 2014, but if Florida had a better offense, we were looking at a Florida team that could have been a national title contender because last season their defense was bar none the best in college football except for, of course, the team in their own conference, the Florida Gators, the best defense in the land. Where should the Lions go? Where do you think they should pick? Reuben Foster, a linebacker out of Alabama, with some checkered off-season and off-field pass that a lot of people say linger too much for them to pick. Bottom line is that dude can play. And for a Lions team that needs a linebacker with DeAndre Levy out of the mix, a guy who really hasn't done much in two seasons because of injury, because of his ability not to be on the field, a lot of people truly believe they should go the route of linebacker. A guy like Foster, who you see, disrupted a lot of what Clemson did on the national title game before they ultimately fell to the Tigers in that classic game. A guy a lot of people believe in. Temple linebacker Hassan Reddick. He's likely going to be gone, but a guy they really should look at if, of course, he's there or if they're within a few picks. Will the Lions trade up for a guy like Reddick? Will they trade up for anybody? It's a big question that we don't really know too much about Bob Quinn yet. Just one NFL draft under his belt so far. Last year a successful one. He drafted depth. He drafted a lot of success. Can he replicate it once more? We're going to grab your questions here. I'm pulling it up the feed here. Uh, we're checking in. Frank Blisdell says Peppers. A lot of people say Jabril Peppers because a lot of people saw what he did locally for this Michigan team this last season for a team that was so dynamic. He was without a doubt their most dynamic player. And yes, he had the diluted test sample that we just found out about about 48 hours ago. It'll be interesting to see if Michigan's talent makes its way to the Lions roster. We've seen it in the past. And we've seen Bob Quinn's Patriots select and really enamor themselves with people around Michigan. Of course, Tom Brady so many years ago, but Jabril Peppers, a really special player. Where he will fit in the NFL has a lot of people believing he'll slide out of the first round. I think he's got the talent to do it. Eric Whiston checking in saying cornerback. Yes, defensive back is very, very deep in this NFL draft, and there's a lot of defensive back strength within that first round. It's a position of need because opposite of Darius Slay, there's been a lot of turnover in the last few years. Slay, we know, is the guy that's really become the franchise cornerback. Whether or not you'd call him a shutdown cornerback really goes game by game. So because of that, I say probably not. So I think in this draft, when there are so many cornerbacks, I think if they take one at 21, it's not a reach. It's not a desperate pick. It's not a boring pick. I think it's a pick of strength that could really make defensive back a strength for this team, and that's not something we've said for a really long time. Peppers B at 21. Will he be there? Steve wants to know. I think he's going to be there. It's a better question whether or not he will be there. I want to let you know we're planning on talking with Dave Burkett from the Detroit Free Press, who is live in Philadelphia on the red carpet at the NFL Draft. And what we do know is that the picks that will make their way to the stage to get their jerseys tonight and hear their names called will run the Rocky Steps. So how cool is that? Hearing your name called at the NFL Draft and running the Rocky Steps in Philadelphia. Foster will be gone, Bill says. The linebacker from Florida, of course, Jared Davis, is who he's saying to go with. What about trading out of the first round? That's what Brian is checking in with and asking us and load up on late round picks. 
Listen, the Patriots don't pick until the third round in this NFL draft. So Bob Quinn came from that. And we're going to reference them a lot until we get a bigger sample size out of Bob Quinn. We've only seen one draft. We know what the Patriots did. We know where Bob Quinn came from. And you better believe the Ford family chose Bob Quinn because of where he came from. So we'll see. I think it's very plausible to see the Lions trade out of the first round and add picks later in this draft, especially when this draft has a lot of defensive talent heavy and laid filled with stars in that first round. I'm going to ask you out there, would you go wide receiver? Is it crazy to think with Anquan Bolden possibly leaving the fold and leaving here that you'd go after a dynamic playmaker, wide receiver, or tight end in the first round with that 21st pick? Eric Ebron, the Lions haven't decided whether or not they're going to make that pick and make that choice to keep his option. So would you grab another tight end just years after picking Eric Ebron after so much head scratching for that pick originally and how much heartache he's called, caused Lions fans with all those drops? All right, Max White jumping in and seeing who would you like to see the Lions pick. Started off the top of the show, I'm going to tell you again, I'm going to go with Florida linebacker Jared Davis. He tops my list. I think a name a lot of people have talked about is Taco Charlton. And there is Davis. He's been dynamic. What he's done with that Florida defense in his time there was really take a Gators team that was in transition over the course of his tenure in Gainesville and turn them in to a defensive stalwart. They had a great defense around him. And some, some people would say, well, he had a lot of help. He was the anchor of that defense, and that's what the Lions lack. It's truly what they've lacked over the years, and that's been a defensive playmaker that they can count on reliably for 15 years. years. Hey, Dave, it's a Max. A cornerstone of a franchise. What's up, Max? How you doing, man? Nothing. Thanks for, so uh, for calling in. I'm we are anticipating Dave Burkett uh, joining us soon here Brad, uh, live from the uh, NFL Draft to talk about local prospects yep. Thanks, that sir. the Lions could jump after to talk about players they could possibly grab. And joining us now on the phone, connecting Dave Burkett. Is that right, Dave? You're with us. What's up, Brad? How you doing? Good, man. Thank you for joining us here. I know it's been a busy day for you in Philly. I read everything that you've written. I have seen everything you've posted. Eleventh uh, hour here. Where are the Lions going with that first round? All right. Pick, first of all, first of all, you couldn't have read everything I've written because I've cranked out a lot of copy. But That's all I I'll, do. I'll let you pass on that one. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look, I mean, I gave him Jared Davis in my last mock draft, and I haven't heard anything to dissuade me from that pick either. Somebody else being there at 21 that they might jump on, or or, you know, moving in another direction. I just think, you know, he, he fills a need from a, a positional standpoint. He is a guy that, um, you know, checks every box from a character and athletic standpoint. You know, I don't know that, uh, you know, maybe they'd be tempted by a Corey Davis if he, if he was there to get Matthew Stafford another weapon. Or, you know, certainly if a Reuben Foster fell, that would, that's a discussion I'm sure they've had. Would they take him? You know, they've met with him. But I just think Jared Davis is a guy that's going to be a, a home run pick for them. Is Reuben Foster, the Alabama linebacker for everybody out there, is he a guy, if he falls, that he can't miss, got to go with him no matter what? Well, that just depends on two things. You know, what your doctors say because he's got some, some medical issues. You know, he's coming off shoulder surgery. He's had some concussions in his past. I think there's a lot that he, you know, needs clearance from from that standpoint. And then how comfortable you are with him just as a person. Um, and the Lions brought him in for a visit. They've done a lot of homework on him. You know, the biggest questions I've heard from NFL scouts are, you know, is he going to be able to disassociate himself from some of the people that, you know, he's close with from, from back home? Um, you know, there are no questions about his work ethic, his football character, those sort of things, and, and certainly not as a player because he's an excellent, you know, player, probably a top 10 talent in this draft. So if it was me, um, I would be, I, I would make that selection if he was there, but certainly I'm not privy to all the information that the Lions have. All right, Dave, we got a few viewers checking in here. Scott wants to know who will be the first Michigan player chosen. Uh, I think it's going to be Jabril Peppers. If you're talking state of Michigan, I think it's going to be Corey Davis from Western Michigan, but I think it'll be Jabril um, out of the, the University of Michigan players. I, think, I still think he goes somewhere in the, you know, late in the first round here. Um, Taco Charlton could go there too, though you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a little more confident that, that uh, Jabril will go there than, than Taco. I think Taco, you know, some teams won't be interested in him that high. Um, I think Jabril, there's enough teams that like him as sort of a gadget guy that you know, he could, he could maybe go in the late 20s there. If he's there for the Lions, is it something that entertained? I know you wrote early that your real peppers to the Lions made sense, could fit. If it does happen, would they go there, and where would they fit him? Yeah, they, he plays safety for the Lions, and I yeah. think he's a guy that, you know, he's probably best as a strong safety, but you could play him at strong or free. You could move him around a little bit. He would return kicks right away. Um, you know, I haven't got any indications here of late that they would go in that direction. Um, that's not to say they wouldn't. I mean, I think he's you know, he's an interesting enough player, an intriguing enough fit, you know, and, and he's a guy that Terrell Austin could use as sort of a movable chess piece. But, 
I just think um, given the you know likelihood of, of who else is on the board at that standpoint, I think there's probably some other guys that, that may be, uh, you know, that, that they may like a little bit better. We've got a few other people weighing in here. Marcia says, hi, Dave. Uh, Brian says he likes the idea of taco. Uh, and let me ask you, just with the, with the vibe of Philly there, what's it like on that red carpet out there? Man, this thing is... Uh, it's always uh, an interesting time out here. You can hear it in the background. I mean, there's a lot of media sort of lining this red carpet. You know, the, the, the prospects come through, and they'll do a couple interviews, then they get pulled for ESPN or NFL Network. They make their way down the red carpet again. You know, it's, it's always an interesting sight here. Uh, you know, I talked to Malik McDowell a little bit earlier. You talked to a couple prospects that you catch, Trey, Trey Davis from, from LSU. I think those are, you know, Malik, obviously a local guy. Trey's a, a sort of an under-the-radar cornerback, four-year starter, also return guy that, you know, I think could, could you know, maybe be in the mix for the Lions at some point. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a little different than Chicago and New York. That's for sure. Beautiful day out here, though. Beautiful weather. All right, if you could predict – one crazy thing that happens tonight that you'll be writing about tonight, tomorrow, and then in the weekend, what would that be coming out of this Lions draft? Wow. Uh, no Laramie Tunsil situations this year. I, I can't, uh, you know, can't predict that. can't imagine that's going to happen. We, we've already seen some people. Yeah, somebody, somebody in my back just said, don't speak too soon. Um, but, you know, you, you, you know they, you've already seen two cornerbacks, probable top 20 picks, you know, that are not going to go that high now. But I just think you're going to see a couple of trades. You know, the, the quarterback – yeah, nobody thinks these guys are elite, elite quarterbacks, but it's a position that's always in demand. So yeah. you could certainly see somebody move up to get Mr. Trubisky, uh, you know, assuming the Browns don't take him at one. The Jets at six are a landing spot, so maybe somebody moves up to five if they really like him. You know, Deshaun Watson's a guy that I've heard all over the board. You know, he's another guy that I think, you know, maybe somebody could move up to get him. So I think you'll see a, a flurry of trades at some point tonight. I know a lot of people are always asking if they think the Lions will trade up or down. Is there any possibility you see the Lions trading up tonight, Dave? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, a better chance they trade down just because that's, that's always been in the, uh, you know, the New England wheelhouse, and, and maybe Quinn would, would do something like that. But, yeah, you know, if there's a guy that they really like that they want to target, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them that, uh, that they do that. All right, man, thank you hey. so much for joining us here. Live from Philadelphia, no. that was Detroit Free Press writer no problem, Dave Brad. Burkett. All right, man, be safe, have fun. He'll have all the coverage for you. You can follow along what he's doing, and, of course, you can – Catch him on the 7 Sports Cave frequently on Sundays with our own Justin Rose. Uh, just down the hall from us here, Max White is working hard inside our control room, grinding away, working the phones. A lot of people are curious if uh, Michigan players will fall to the Lions if Bob Quinn and the Lions end up selecting them. I think the big one uh, would be that playmaker, and he floated out there, Dave did, Corey Davis from Western Michigan. We saw what he did so frequently against MAC competition Against anybody, what Corey Davis did was just freakish athletic ability, jumping over the top. Uh, we have Kim watching. Kim, thanks for joining us here tonight. Daniel jumping in from Bad Axe. Uh, he says he thinks the Lions need to fill the linebacker position. Raise your hand if you agree. Have to think that. Uh, Dave certainly agreed with us there right off the top, said Davis has got to be the guy from Florida. If other people fall, I think uh, Temple Sasan Reddick is a guy the Lions should look at if he's there. Most likely he'll be gone. Depth at running back is not something the Lions have been able to say about the running back core for a long time. Last year, they didn't have much depth at all. What they did last year was lean on a very lean unit, and they ended up having the worst rushing attack in the NFL. Do you think running back is a position of need? Yes. But would you go in the first round and grab a running back? If you're doing that, they have to be a very, very special player. If you're doing it at 21, I don't know if that special of a player is there. I think waiting until the second or third round might be a better call, especially when you have Amir Abdullah coming back from injury. You didn't get Adrian Peterson. I don't know how close the Lions ever really were there. We'll see how it happens. All right, John is checking in. Thanks for watching. He says Charles Harris, Missouri. Another guy, dynamic. We're talking about this defense and what the Lions really need to add. We saw what they can do on offense and building that offensive line this offseason. I think definitely strengthened what we believe they can do in the passing attack, what we hope they can do in the running attack. What we don't know is what this team can do on defense. They're going to look a whole lot different, especially on paper going into this year. DeAndre Levy didn't add much to this team the last two seasons, but he's officially gone. So that is a hole. That is a need at linebacker. I think a lot of people see dynamic pass rusher as something this team needs, a run stopper in the middle, something this team needs. So you're looking at defensive end linebacker as huge positions of needs. I definitely think cornerback is somewhere this team could go. This draft is deep at cornerback. We've said that repeatedly. All right, throw us your questions here. We're winding down 
our Draft Buzz Live here, Sports Buzz Live, as we talk Draft Buzz. Lions are picking at number 21 today. In just a little bit, we're going to hear that first name called. Miles Garrett is the name we expect. Many reports out of Philadelphia signaling for sure the Browns are going to go that way. The Texas A&M defensive end expected to go number one. The Lions pick 20 picks later. Will they still pick there? Will they still be there? I say they stay put at number 21, and they go the defensive side of the ball. We have Michael joining in. He says, I wonder how many Michigan State guys will go in the first round. Michael, I think you know the answer to that question. I think you're just baiting people. Here go the responses on that. We always like the trash talking here on Facebook. It is fun. It's what makes the Internet such a terrible and wonderful place at the same time. Lions fans out there, running back, tight end, wide receiver, what would you do if you hear those positions called in the first round for your team? Are you going to groan? Are you going to moan? Are you going to celebrate? Is there any name that you would hear at 21 at an offensive skill position that would make you go nuts? Because we saw for so many years under Matt Millen, under Martin Mayhew, offensive skill position one year after another. And so many people got so flustered because that's not truly how you build a successful Super Bowl contending franchise. We have not seen any of the illustrious great franchises build that way. So what Bob Quinn did this offseason was go build in the trenches. Rick Wagner, TJ Lang, two offensive linemen that come with a lot of successful past, a Pro Bowl history for both of them, coming to the line, adding to what Matthew Stafford has always asked for, and that's just protection up front, a chance to throw the ball, a chance to see the ball thrown, and hopefully a better chance to run the ball. If we see a tight end drafted, does that signal the end for Eric Ebron? Certainly seems like it. I think you could add two tight ends to this offense, but I think the way things have gone, Eric Ebron in this offense, would they see him signing on? You could argue Bob Quinn, again, just came from New England. What they built with Rob Gronkowski and then with Michael Bennett last season, of course, with Quinn not in the mix there, two dynamic tight ends. And you know injuries are always going to happen, so you're going to build for depth. Maybe you go with Ebron this year to boost his productivity to see what he can do. You draft a tight end, you draft a guy in there that would push him a little bit, prove that he is the man, and you see what happens if you want to bring him back next year, if he has the option to come back. Uh, we're going to have Johnny weighing in with an opinion I think a lot of people would say. If the Lions grab a skill guy, I would be sick. Seeing them draft a wide receiver or a tight end for how many times in the last many drafts would not exactly be the popular pick here in Detroit. Johnny says move down. Move down out of number 21, collect more picks. Johnny, thanks for weighing in. Dennis says if Peppers is there, the Lions have to go with him. At number 21, Jabril Peppers would, pay, would play safety in the NFL. I asked Jim Harbaugh last season, I said if, if two weeks into his uh, junior campaign, Jabril Peppers is dynamic, does everything on the field, where would you go? I said you got to go and ask him where he would put him in the NFL field. And Harbaugh said, we're going to play him at safety. I can't imagine NFL teams putting him anywhere else. He'd be a specialist. He'd be a safety. The Lions definitely have a need back there. He would fit in in different places. Uh, Johnny says, I would be sick about the skill positions, and then says, Quinn is the real deal. A lot of people excited about what Bob Quinn did in his first season with the Lions, but he also said at a season ticket holder summit last week, two weeks ago, when they unveiled their new jerseys, listen, Making it to the playoffs and getting knocked down the first round is not something I came to Detroit to do. So if Lions fans have expectations out there, Bob Quinn is right there with you. He has high expectations for this franchise and for this team. And getting knocked out and almost embarrassed to Seattle in the first round on the road in the first week of the playoffs is not what Bob Quinn came here to do. So motivating to hear from the general manager's mouth. Interesting to see what they do tonight in the draft. Another question from Johnny, tight end, why? Because maybe they see what we see that too many balls fall into Eric Ebron's hands and then hit the ground. You want productivity out of that position? You need more people. Max, over here laughing. Be an adult, Max. I didn't mean that, bud. No, no, it's, it's funny because it's true. They do fall out of his hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Word funny. choice, word choice, yeah. word choice. All right, we'll go off the top of the show how we started things here. Linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. Where the Lions should go is linebacker. They need help at linebacker. I say Jared Davis out of Florida, Reuben Foster out of Alabama, a guy that has injury problems. He has an interesting off-field surrounding situation, a guy that we talked to Dave Burkett about is a top 10 talent, but whether or not his off-field and injured past keeps him there, uh, certainly something in a storyline to watch. I think Temple linebacker Hassan Reddick will likely be gone by the time the Lions pick. I don't see them trading up to get a guy like that when there are so many linebackers and cornerbacks littering this first-round talent. Uh, value at running back in the first round is a question that a lot of people have thrown out. 
Corey Davis, the Western Michigan wide receiver, a name we watched really in the second half, especially of the college football season, as a guy, wait a minute, would he fit in behind Marvin Jones and Golden Tate as a, as a guy to fly down the seam, as a guy to fly down the edge and to really open up the Lions passing game? Really interesting. And then, of course, two local products, defensive end Taco Charlton out of Michigan and linebacker Jabril Peppers out of Michigan, who would, of course, play safety in the NFL and specialist. Who do I see them picking? Dennis wants to know. I see Jared Davis. Not to beat a dead horse, but I really feel like he's a guy that would change this Lions defense. He's a guy at Florida that really made that defense very dynamic. If you look at any of his tape, when a running back ran at him, it was like a slate of concrete meeting them in the middle of the defensive front. If they would burst through the defensive line, there was Davis waiting for them, just flattening him and not letting any more run out of that running back. He's a guy to watch. He's a guy that I see that could grab at number 21. Michael wants to know how state players will be taken in the front in the first round. You asked that already, Michael. If you're going to throw out some material like that, my friend, you got to you try out some new stuff. Meteorologist Keenan Smith is watching with us, everybody. Thank you, Keenan. Thank you for watching and thank you for keeping us safe. Windy day, got my umbrella because I woke up and watched Keenan like I do every day, and you should too. We thank you for joining us here on Sports Buzz Live on Facebook Live. Join us throughout the evening. Casey Hollins will be reporting live in Allen Park throughout the evening with all the coverage from the NFL Draft and the Lions picking, scheduled to pick, 21st overall. It's been fun. We're going to keep you posted throughout the night. I am Brad Galley signing off. We'll be with you guys all night. Thanks for watching.